Welcome to the 2016 Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the State College of Florida. It's wonderful to see so many uh, faces here and uh, some, some new um, and uh, many, many that uh, I've known for quite a while. Uh, my name is Matt Ennis. I'm the Director of Athletics at State College of Florida and I will serve as your MC uh, tonight. Just a quick overview. We will um, have a few words from uh, Dr. Donald R. Bowman who is the Vice President of Student Affairs, and then uh, we'll proceed into our dinner, and after dinner, then we'll go into the induction uh, ceremonies themselves. Um, so we hope you have a wonderful evening, and without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Bowman to the podium. Well, good evening. <laughs> good evening. You can tell it's a feisty group when you start a little after seven, so I, I like that idea. It should be a, a good evening ahead of us. Well, on behalf of Dr. Probstfield, as well as our SCF Foundation Board of Directors and our State College of Florida Board of Trustees, welcome. And this being a very special evening because it is not only the ninth induction ceremony into the Hall of Fame, but it is the inaugural, very first time, alumni weekend that is being uh, put forward by our new uh, alumni director as well as our overall foundation office. And I just am so pleased to see that the intercollegiate athletic program is having the opportunity tonight to kick off this wonderful opportunity for our alumni that we've not had for quite some time. We're honored tonight to have the family of Ron Cash. We're also very honored to have Al and his lovely immediate and extended family here tonight, as well as one of our most ardent cheerleaders for all of our athletics, and I believe she may have some bruises and scars to prove that, Dr. Sarah Pappas, and of course, her husband, Dr. George Pappas. We're so pleased to be honoring all three individuals this evening. I have to say at this point though, doctor, reverend, maybe sir, coach Wynn to my right. I don't know, I don't know if there are any more labels that I could give this gentleman, but what I would like to say at this point in time is thank you for sowing the seeds of our athletic program years and years ago. And I trust that the harvest that you see tonight, uh, you have reaped and we have reaped together, is rich in excellence. Before we go any further, I think all due respect to Reverend Coach Sir Wynn. Thank you. If we could, before we start the evening, I think it would be most befitting if we would go to prayer. And I would ask all of us to bow our heads in this time of blessing. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you in absolute all of your creation and humbled by the multitude of blessings that you have been able to bestow upon each of us during our lifetime. It is with great joy that we gather tonight to honor those individuals who have showcased their talents, their skills, their compassion for a junior college athletic program, always committed to role modeling the values and behaviors expected, even required, of a future that embraces love, inclusion, and hope. We do tonight, however, come before you with heavy hearts and sadness for those that we cannot physically embrace tonight 
to say thank you. But we know in our hearts that a junior college league of talented athletes, coaches, and staff are in your midst, thanks to MJC, MCC, and SCF. Oh, what a group that must be. Lastly, grant us the wisdom to be continually seeking your guidance, as well as the gratitude and humility for the talents and gifts each of us have been given. Amen. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. I wanted to just thank a few of our sponsors. Uh, Mart's first class um, as a sponsor of this and our golf tournament tomorrow. Um, Dr. Sarah Pappas as a sponsor of our, our uh, program and the trophy case as a sponsor. So we'd like to thank them for uh, their sponsorship of this wonderful event. Uh, also would like to, we have a great deal of Hall of Famers uh, here that are already in the Hall of Fame. And so I'd like to, to yeah, I'd like to recognize them. <clears throat> Stand up, wave your hand, whatever works for you. Um, I, will, I will announce you by name, so don't start doing it quite yet. Uh, first off, I saw everyone shaking their hand. People, people actually just got into the Hall of Fame by doing that, I think. Um, first, we've got Coach Skip Wynn. Uh, glad to have you here. And in the back, we've got Harry Canan, Coach Canan. And I see Pat Osborne right here uh, in the table here. And he's joined at the same table as Nick Cafaro. I think you had to be a Hall of Famer to sit there, Dr. Mears. Um, John O'Connor's there as well, John O'Connor. <laughs> and uh, Dave Moats back in the back there. Coach Moats, still coaching with us. Uh, I didn't see where Ryan Moore ran off to, um, but we've got Ryan Moore in the back. As I, I, was told, I was told that's where you sat in class, too. Just heard that. Uh, coach Chip Sines, uh, basketball coach with us. At, at the same table is Tom Cook, baseball player. And Mr. George Sanders in the back. He doesn't want to be right. And he is joined with Meredith Headings. Hi. So, pretty great show up of uh, Hall of Famers. And thank you all for, for being here tonight. Um, it speaks volumes of what started. This is the ninth Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony for us. And the fact that, that those that have been honored uh, continue to come back and uh, support and uh, show that uh, the inducting class uh, that they're a part of an elite group. Uh, we really appreciate you you being here. So thank you. Uh, as we move forward, you'll see uh, a few folks that we will invite to the stage, and those folks will be saying some kind words about the individual who's going to be inducted uh, into the the Hall of Fame. Um, and normally we would recognize our, our president at the beginning, but I'm going to wait because she's going to come up and do one of our inductions. So um, not, not passing her over by any means. Um, after the individual is, uh, is introduced, then we'll have them come up and they'll have a few minutes to say a few words as well to accept uh, the honor. And we'll do all the photos and all those wonderful things. Um, so I really hope that you'll enjoy the rest of the evening. Uh, this is a really uh, particularly special uh, induction here in that uh, this, I don't think this has happened where a brother-in-law will get to speak on the behalf um, of his, his brother-in-law and that, that's, that's pretty impressive. So um, I'd like to invite our current baseball coach, Tim Hill, too, to the stage to say a few words about Al Corbeil. Nice, nice words I asked him to say. Okay, um, Matt did say make sure I say something nice about him. Uh, so he, he does coach at one of our rivals, and we won't hold that against him because that's not why he's here tonight. Um, so when, I, when Matt asked me if I could introduce him, I said, well, what do you want me to say? And uh, he said, I don't know, say something that maybe people don't know about him, maybe something funny. And uh, wow, I could be here all day about that. 
Um, Al is very much a prankster, and uh, he, he really pranked me pretty good over the years. And uh, so many different things that he got me with, and every one seemed to keep getting a little bit bigger than the next one. And uh, it, it led to one where him and I were on a recruiting trip. He was at Polk State, where he is now, and, and I'm at SCF, and we go to Maryland for a recruiting trip, and I bring my radar gun, and I'm a little nervous about taking it through the security at Tampa Airport, and because uh, all we had was a carry-on. And um, anyway, got through there okay, or so I thought. And we get to Baltimore okay, we check into our hotel, and uh, Al wanted to make sure the radar gun was charged up, because we had a big day the next day. And so I went to get out the radar gun. I said, that's a good idea. I went to pull it out of my carry-on, and it was not there. And uh, I'm a little bit nervous about this because in all the chaos of me worrying about that going through security, um, I thought maybe I had left it uh, in the Tampa airport. I wasn't sure. I started second-guessing myself. And anyway, it just really became a big story. I ended up calling my dad uh, back home because I think I've lost this $1,500 radar gun now. And uh, Al is continuing to feed me all this basically crap about where it is. <laughs> And uh, so my dad got in on it, as well as my mom, which really surprised me. Um, so I call home, and they're telling me, well, how could you leave something like that? And, uh, you know, are you not responsible or what? And uh, Al's just shaking his head the whole time. And then uh, finally I figured out what was going on, and uh, Al finally would put an end to it, and he pulls out the gun from behind the pillow in the uh, hotel room. He goes, bang, 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 I got your gun. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I was kind of relieved at first I didn't lose a $1,500 piece of college equipment, um, but uh, I figured out how could I get them back, and uh, I had a class at the time that uh, I shared that story with uh, in weightlifting, and a guy came up to me and he said, one of my students, he goes, I got the perfect thing for you, coach, I repo cars, and he said, <laughs> he said, we can repo his car, no problem. He goes, I'll make sure he gets it back. Uh, and the only thing that kept me from doing that was my sister. And so I, I couldn't tick off my sister because you don't want to tick her off. <laughs> but I have no problem doing that to Al, though. <laughs> so anyway, we've had a great time. It was an honor for me to coach Al uh, my first year at SCF as a coach. And uh, he was a heck of a player uh, on a great team. And it was my first year coaching here. It was just an amazing experience. He was terrific in every way, and little did I know at that, that time that uh, he would end up marrying my sister. And beyond his amazing feats on the field, he is a more incredible person, a godly man, a terrific husband to my sister, and I'm just amazed at how he interacts with his kids, his two young boys. He's a terrific father, and I just couldn't be any more proud to be his brother and uh, to introduce him tonight and welcome him into the Hall of Fame here at our college, Al Corbeil. I think you might have missed your calling in the uh, uh, introduction of roasting business. Uh, you, you might have a future in that. Um, I, I'm, I'm thankful to, to my brother-in-law, uh, Tim Hill. Uh, he spent a lot of time with me. Uh, in 1999, in our World Series year, uh, after practice, throwing to me, flipping to me, uh, making me a better player. And then uh, down the road, uh, the friendship we built uh, took me under his wing coaching, uh, introduced me to a lot of people scouting. Uh, in the business and helped me a lot recruiting. Uh, so I, I am really thankful for you uh, for everything, and I'm thankful to be your brother. So thank you. Um, I want to first recognize and uh, the people that I'm in, in being inducted with, uh, the Cash family, congratulations, uh, Dr. Pappas as well. Um, I was uh, personally just fortunate to have the opportunity to play at Manatee Community College while you were the president. And so thank you uh, to you for uh, you seeing the value in athletics and supporting us. Um, Manatee Community College has been uh, a family uh, to me, um, an extended family. And, uh, you know, right now I think I need to thank a lot of people in this room 
Uh, my family's gone through a lot in the last couple months, and uh, a lot of you have stood with us and, and prayed with us and uh, texted me and called me and supported us, and, and, and I'm thankful to, to a number of you in this room. So I want to say thank you on behalf of myself and my wife. Uh, my, my wife couldn't make it today. We were totally uh, planning on her coming. Uh, my son had a treatment yesterday, and it, it didn't go as well as planned, so she's staying home watching uh, our little boy. <clears throat> my mother couldn't make it today. Uh, I want to just recognize her. Um, she's down in South Florida taking care of her mother, uh, who's got some physical ailments. But, but my dad is here. Uh, thanks for coming, Dad. My stepmom, Muncie's here, and uh, my mother-in-law, Miss Seven, is here, and uh, some more more of the Hill family. Um, this is a, uh, a bittersweet day for me. Um, my my father-in-law is not here. A uh, man that I uh, loved, admired, respected. Um, who mentored me, who, who took me under his wing a, as a player and as a coach, and uh, who I owe a great deal to. Um, you know, I think a couple words come to mind uh, when, when I think about uh, growing up and when I think about being part of this program. And two of them are sacrifice and, uh, and commitment. Um, my parents uh, divorced when I was about five or six, and... Uh, Fortunately for me, uh, my parents stayed committed uh, to myself and to my brother and to my sister. And my dad stayed nearby and my mom worked. My mom worked nights uh, as a nurse and she worked the night shift. And there was an opportunity for me uh, growing up to potentially get into trouble because of the hours she worked. Um, but on the other side of that, I had a father that uh, really believed in, in the value of uh, spending time with, with, with his kids and he believed uh, he lived by the creed that uh, if you can keep your kids on the ball field you can keep them out of trouble and so I spent uh, nearly what seemed like every night on a ball field and uh, and my dad uh, could have done other things he could have taken other jobs that uh, maybe paid him better or he could have uh, indulged in other activities that maybe uh, would have suited him better individually but but he sacrificed um, to be with us and so I thank you for that, Dad. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to play Little League for my dad. And I got to learn some uh, incredible life lessons. I played for two sides of it. My dad coached us in the spring in the, on the Little League team, the rec team. Um, and we were terrible. We were really, really bad. <laughs> um, we had uh, myself and, and a girl that lived around the block that uh, – was on our team every year. Now the girl, believe it or not, was arguably the best player in the league. <laughs> and she was good. And uh, those were the only two good players we had. My dad would draft uh, the team every year, and he would draft the, the worst players in the league that nobody wanted. So we would finish uh, in the bottom of the barrel every year. But what my dad did was he, he took every one of those kids, and, and he taught them how to catch, and he taught them how to throw, and he taught them how to field a ground ball, and he taught them how to catch a pop-up, and he, and he built confidence in them uh, that I think is a trait that, that, that they needed at that age to move forward into other things. And, and at the end of every season, we would uh, we'd beat the first-place team, the second-place team at the end of the year, and uh, they would be devastated, and that was our kind of celebration for the year. And then in the fall, I would play on the All-Star team, and uh, the All-Star team was a completely different story. There were some really good players, and believe it or not, Little League was uh, somewhat political at the time. And uh, my dad would not get in the politics of it. He would, uh, it was an assistant coach, and I would sit on the bench. And uh, I'd have to scratch and claw and, and do anything I could to get any innings I can get, any at-bats I could get. And uh, he would never get involved. He'd just say, work harder, make them put you in. Um, and I think those are traits that I took with me uh, they kept me hungry for a long time. Um, fast forward to my senior year of high school, down in Broward County at Plantation High. Uh, I was just tearing up the, the county, having a phenomenal year. I had some pro teams talking to me, but I had uh, very, very little college interest. Maybe one or two teams had called me. And uh, a scout for the Yankees, Joe Arnold, who ironically uh, was the, f the last coach at Polk State that I replaced. Um, called Coach Hill, and he said, hey, I got a hitter for you. You need to see this kid. Uh, Coach Hill called me up and said, hey, would you like to come up here and, and visit and work out? And I said, love to. 
so my dad and I hopped in the car and we came on up here to uh, to Manatee and we we drove uh, through all the bugs on our windshield and it was a little bit different uh, back then and we got to the field and there was uh, two gentlemen with uh, bright white hair on the field and about 70 other players and I looked at my dad and I go is this a tryout what's going on and coach Hill came up to me and he goes you want to hit? And I go, I sure do. And I got in there, and Moats was on the mound uh, about 30 feet away, uh, throwing about 95. <laughs> <coughs> I am uh, fairly certain he was trying to strike me out. Um, I hit a couple of line drives, and, and I got out after about eight swings, and I got ready for my next round uh, of BP, and Coach Hill called me over, and he said, uh, let's go. And I said, well, you don't want to watch me hit again? Nope, we're good. You want to throw? Do want, nope, we're good. Let's go. So I said, okay. So we left after one round of BP and, and poor Moats. He left them with those 70 kids. I, I hope it was <laughs> worth it. Um, and I went up to Coach Hill's office and I was just uh, blown away. I got up there and I saw all the pictures of uh, all the former players on the walls, the baseball cards, the former pro players, the guys currently playing, the guys at the big colleges. and I, and he made me an offer, and I, and I left the uh, the building with my dad, and we just my dad said, "You need to play for that guy," and I said, "Absolutely." So, uh, signed the scholarship, finished my senior year, got drafted. Everything was great. Was really excited about coming to Manatee. Got here, and uh, first week of practice, maybe the first or second day, uh, Coach Hill's talking base running. I'm sitting down, everybody's sitting down listening, and I stood up and. Uh, my back was hurt. I couldn't couldn't twist, couldn't do anything. Um, tried to get it diagnosed, looked at, didn't do anything all fall. Went to the doctor, uh, told me uh, you got a stress fracture in your back. You might need to forget about playing. You might need to get it fused. Um, I remember leaving the office uh, in tears, and uh, my dad was there, and he had some choice words, and nothing I'll say over the microphone. But in short, we're gonna. Uh, find another doctor and somebody knows what they're talking about and we did and we found somebody a little more favorable and I started trying to rehab it and I remember at the end of the fall uh, still had not swung a bat the whole year um, I was still in pain I didn't know if I was gonna be able to play and I went in coach Hill's office for our exit meetings and I said uh, I, I don't know what I could do I don't know if I need a red shirt and he just cut me off and he said uh, you're gonna go home, you're gonna come back here uh, after the break and you're gonna hit the middle of my lineup. And it was matter of fact and that was it and that's what happened. Uh, I came back in my very first game I played in my very first swing uh, in a game on the field was against uh, a legend, one of the best pitchers I've ever faced, Nick Farrell. <laughs> <coughs> and, uh, the first swing I took, I hit a line drive off Nick's head. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't out. Uh, the ball went uh, about as high as the lights off your head. I was, uh, I was scared. I thought I killed him. Um, I was running back to the dugout praying, I hope he doesn't die. I can't believe this just happened. And uh, fortunately, I know now, and for those of you that know Nick, you know he's got a really hard head. Uh, Nick had a lot of fun with that. He uh, he sent me letters over the years about how he can't remember anything and wakes up in the middle of the night and has headaches. And so we've, we've built a pretty good friendship uh, through that. Um, and really after that, my, my career at Manatee kind of took off. Uh, I, I had some great years as a player. Truth be told, uh, the players around me were phenomenal. Uh, that's why I had some of the numbers I had. I had... Uh, Josh Rennick hitting in front of me who stole 70 bases. So it's easy to drive in a lot of runs when somebody's standing on second or third. I had Andy Newfield hitting behind me who played in the College World Series with us and then played in College World Series at Georgia. And Justin Lincoln who set the home run record. record and um, my roommate John Webb who pitched in the big leagues. I mean, we, we had a really good team. Um, it was a family atmosphere for me more than the records, more than anything. Something that uh, Miss Seven and Coach Hill uh, formulated together. They had the Bible studies at their house. They had us over. They fed us. Uh, 
it was a team cultivated environment that uh, that Coach Hill created, and uh, those are the memories that I take with me uh, more than anything. Um, something that uh, I try to do uh, in some ways as, as a coach, um, and it's the family that uh, was created here. So I'm forever grateful uh, for everything I experienced uh, at Manatee Community College. I mean, it uh, took my life off to a tremendous path in so many ways. I met my wife here, uh, Coach Hill's daughter, um, so, so many positive things. So I'm thankful, I'm humbled, I'm honored. Uh, I'm just proud to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Thank you. As athletic director, I get to see all the nominations for Hall of Fame. And I won't say who the nomination uh, was submitted by, but I will say their favorite memory was Al Corbeil hitting the ball off their dome in the alumni game. So <laughs> I'll leave that to you to guess as to who that was. This, this next presenter needs no introduction. Uh, he's... Uh, had enough of those, I think, but I would like to invite Coach Skip Wynn. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Matt Cash. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank Lord. thanks to the Lord for me being able to be here and for all of you guys to being able to be here. Uh, my wife probably knew me better than anybody else did, and that's the way it ought to be, isn't it? That's what I thought. Anyway, I better think it ought you know, go out in the barn to sleep. But anyway, she, she, she knew me better than anybody else. And I've heard her on several occasions say to the, the crowd, or whoever it was she's talking to, that if the topic of conversation gets beyond baseball and, and, and uh, Bird dogs, don't ask Bob to participate. <laughs> See how well she knew me? These people know too. That's a game warden right there. <laughs> Honorary. It, uh, and anyway, I, I have the opportunity tonight, and I feel very well that I'll be operating within the parameters that Marilyn set for me. Uh, to, I'll mention bird dogs every once in a while, but most of the time it'll be centered around one of the best college athletes I've ever seen. Now, not a good-looking uh, athlete, I'll talk more about that, but as far as production is concerned, uh, I have the honor tonight to talk about Ronnie Cash. I saw a lot of ball players in my time, and I know some of you here probably have seen more than I have, but without question, Ronnie Cash was the most what was the most natural hitter, the best natural hitter that I've ever seen. He didn't have to think or whatever. He just went up there and hit, and he believed he could hit anybody. And isn't that what you want you guys to think? Uh, but but he really did. Uh, and it's my honor to say to talk to you a little bit about Ronnie Cash. My first, the first time I saw Ronnie, I was in Atlanta for the Georgia High School All-Star Baseball game. Uh, it was a north and south sort of thing, you know, that they do. And uh, they had two days of workout and then a, then a game. Well, I was there to see all that. I was sitting in the bleachers in Atlanta Stadium, and this guy that I knew pretty well, <laughs> he was a character, he was a... Uh, brave scout named Poochie Hartsfield. I don't know, some of you might have heard of Poochie Hartsfield because he was a legend in his own mind, no doubt about it. But he, he called me, he came away and said, come here, come here. So I went to him and he said, uh, I want you to go down here and watch this cash boy hit. And I said, okay. So when I got down there, he said, now, let me tell you something, don't look at, at how he stands. I don't look at anything relative to the fundamentals of hitting. Just watch the bat, the ball jump off his bat. And that's exactly 
right then I made up my mind and I followed after I saw him because then for the next three days I watched him just light up Atlanta Stadium, no doubt about it. In the in the practices and the games, in the game and whatever, he he just flat lit up. I I I have this to say about Ronnie, and I say this in love, not not in jest. Ronnie is what I call, what I would call, a terrible, terrible looking, really, really good hitter. <laughs> and that's the way it was. That's the best way I know to sum it up. Because if you if you if you if you watched him at the plate, you'd think this guy couldn't hit me. And you know that's bad if he can't hit me. Uh, but but I, I took Poochie Hartsfield's uh, uh, advice, and I just watched the ball jumping off his bat. Well, I kind of followed that right on down, and and that was after I got to know Ronnie better and better. I found I, I decided that this guy is, is a real blue collar ball player, no doubt about it. He was always the dirtiest guy in the ballpark because he got on base a lot, stole bases a lot, and, uh, and he, 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 he was just a scrubby-looking player. Uh, and and, and he, 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 he that's, that's the way he was. He just, every time he came in the ballpark to practice or to play or whatever, he went wide open. He worked as hard as humanly possible to work every day to make himself a better player and still looking terrible but producing tremendously and that's right and that's the way it was uh, so then i kind of lost my train of thought i'm just kind of rambling anyway i have ram I, I, I have rambling rights don't i okay <laughs> all right thank you very much for that <clears throat> In, anyway, that, that's that's the kind of ball player Ronnie was. Uh, he and like I said, he he felt like he could hit anybody. Uh, and then so later on, just to skip on down and save some time, I could talk about Ronnie Cash for as long as I live, and I don't know how much longer that'll be, but I'd give it everything I got. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Some of you. Uh, 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 some of you who know me well know that the only foreign language I speak is Georgian. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, as, I, as I watched Ronnie grow, uh, as I got to, 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 to know what he was about and watch him grow, I, I knew there wasn't any question about his offensive end of the, end of the game because he hit. he'd knock in runs and produce runs and whatever, looking terrible all the time. Uh, but now on the other side of the ball, on, his de on the defense was a, a totally different story. Uh, he played short as a freshman uh, and did a terrible job, terrible job. And then I moved him to third as a, a, as a sophomore and he did not quite so bad a job. But anyway, just, just, just to tell you a little bit more about how his personality was and how he thought. Uh, he he was, we were playing at Brevard Community College over in Coco, and Ronnie was playing short, and it was a run on third base and, and two out. Guy hit a little ground ball to Ronnie, and he kicked it. So he let in that run. Well, next, next play, we got the guy out. I don't remember how it was, but anyway, when Ronnie came by me, I was coaching third base, of course. When, uh, when he came by me, uh, he was fussing at himself, and those of you who had to, were fortunate enough to know Ronnie, you can see him fussing at himself. Uh, but anyway, he was fussing at himself. I said, Ronnie, what's the matter with you, bud? He said, well, I let in a run. I let in a run. I said, Ronnie, hold up now. You know you're a butcher. You know you're a butcher. So just just make up your mind that you've got to knock in more than you let in. Okay, 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 he said. So the next, oh... A little while after that, he came up with runners on thir second and third and hit a shot to right center, knocked in both those runs. When he slid in the second base, he jumped up as happy as you could ever see him like this and clapping and clapping, and he held up to, to me two fingers. <laughs> so that meant, you know, he let in one, knocked in two, so he's ahead. I did figure that right, didn't I, Mike Mears? <laughs> 
Okay. I was, I was glad to know Ronnie could do that math, I tell you. <laughs> now, but I loved him. I loved him to pieces. Now, go, skipping back a little bit uh, uh, about his hitting. It's like I said a minute ago, he, he thought he ought to get a hit every time he was up. And this one night we were playing at home, playing against Gulf Coast Community College from, from uh, Panama City. And they had a pitcher, now Pat Osborne and some of you guys here could, will probably be able to name this pitcher, but I don't remember his name. I think he wound up pitching in the majors for Baltimore. Wayne Garland. Wayne Garland, thank you very much. Who told me that? Pat, good, good, that a boy. Hey, he's in a, he's in a league by himself. Y'all, y'all have heard me tell the story about him about the fat boy attitude. Okay, all right. Anyway, I see, I told you I'd ramble, but all right, I also told you I had rambling rights. All right, but Ronnie, in that game, we were going along there about uh, oh I don't know, fifth or sixth inning, and and this Wayne Garland was going for was pitching for. Gulf Coast, and I believe Robin Flake might have been pitching for us. Robin was as good a little pitcher as ever towed the rubber. I'll tell you that now. Those of you who knew him can back me up on that. Uh, but anyway, we had a really good game going. And well, well, when we were, I got him out, and then Ronnie was leading off the inning following that. Uh, and uh, Ronnie... The first two times up, he had hit a ball. He had hit balls both times as hard as humanly possible to hit them. Uh, and he, when he was getting ready to go in the on deck circle, he had his hand, had a bat in his hand like this, and he said, "What am I doing wrong, Skip? What am I doing wrong, Skip?" And I, I just reached back in the bat rack. That's when we were still using wooden bats. I just reached back in the bat rack and got a bat and handed it to Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, try this bat. It might help you a little bit. And he said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that feels good. That feels good. <laughs> and I think it was either Johnny Grubb or Harris Saferight batting right behind him. And one of them said to me, Skip, you don't, you don't even know what that bat that you gave him, do you? I said, no, but it doesn't matter. You give him a two by four and he could hit with it. <laughs> so on the first pitch to him, that, that at bat, he hit a ball out of there completely over the light poles in right center. When he came by me at third base and I was congratulating him, he said, good bat, Skip, good bat, Skip. <laughs> and that's the way he was. That's the way he was. He was, like I said, he was just a terrible-looking, tremendous ball player. <laughs> and, 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 and you, you know, just look, just like Poochie told me, said, don't watch how he does it, just watch his results. And that's the way he was. That's the way he was. And he, and he Ronnie went on, then... After he played for us, he went on, played for Florida State, got drafted by Detroit, I think it was, and uh, then went on and made the major leagues uh, and, and always hit, right up, at, right, uh, at every, whatever level he played, he hit. I mean, he hit hard. At that time, some of you might, some of you old folks in here, you, you know, some of you old folks, you know, I, I, that's a league I still play in. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, at that time, Detroit had a first baseman named Norman Cash. Any of you remember Norman Cash? Left-handed first baseman, good player, good hitter. Uh, and he was just about, just about at the end of his career. Well, the Tigers were grooming Ronnie Cash to take Norman Cash's place at first base, to play first base. Now, the, the two Cashes were not related in any way. But... So that's the way they were grooming. That's the way the Tigers were grooming Ronnie to, to take over for Norman. And, uh, Ron, and Ronnie did well. I think he played for the Tigers two or three years. I don't remember. But anyway, then he had some sort of health problem that took him out of baseball totally, and he never played anymore. Uh, but I tell you this, I saw enough of him in his, exp in, in his time with me so that I just... You know, I thank God for making Ronnie Cash part of my life. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm a better person for having known Ronnie Cash. May he rest in peace. I'd like to invite Matt Cash to accept the award on his father's honor.
Wow, Coach, thank you so much. Those kind words, you know, hearing those stories was so great. You know, I never knew a lot of those things you, you know, just spoke about. So that's great. Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, on, behalf, on behalf of my dad and um, the Cash family, I just want to thank you guys for um, giving him this award. You know, I know he really would have loved this. Um, you could just really tell he was a ball player. Just, you know, whatever he did, he just, he had that in him. And that's just what I remember about him. So thank you so much. Thanks. Some uh, tremendous baseball hitters that uh, just were honored um, and uh, speaks volumes of the tradition that, that our program uh, has. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our sixth president of State College of Florida to, to speak on behalf of Dr. Sarah Pappas, Dr. Carol Propsfield. So I have notes because I worked for Dr. Sarah Pappas and nobody ever wants to see the hurry up gesture when you're talking. <laughs> so I'll be crisp and to the point. Truly, it is a privilege and an honor to be able to say a few words about my friend and my mentor, Dr. Sarah Pappas. I can tell you that when Sarah was president of the State College of Florida, from 1997 to 2008, our softball team went to the national championship and our baseball team went to the JUCO World Series twice. I could easily spend hours telling you about all that Sarah has accomplished while president at this institution. I could tell you that Sarah is the president of the William G. and Marie Selby Foundation since 2009 and that under her leadership, the Selby Foundation has substantially increased their support for SCF scholarships. I can tell you quite a lot about what Sarah has done throughout her life, but tonight I want to tell you a few stories about the Sarah Pappas I know. Sarah is SCF's greatest cheerleader. You could see Sarah at baseball, softball, volleyball, and basketball games, feverishly cheering our teams along to the last pitch, serve, or buzzer. She always brought her little plastic bottle of coins to the volleyball games to make sure her support could be heard. Well, at least she did that until we were told they were forbidden. <laughs> Sarah continues every day to be a respected voice of support for this college that she so dearly loves. Sarah is a hot dog lover. She enjoyed coming to see our athletes play because she cared about our students and she cared about their success. But the icing on the cake was when she could bite into a nice plump hot dog while watching the game. I often wondered what she liked more, but now I know because every time I invite her to join me at a game, she always says yes before asking if hot dogs will be served. <laughs> Sarah is relentlessly inquisitive. Frequently, we would see her husband, George, in attendance at games, unless, of course, the Red Sox were being televised. <laughs> George is an avid baseball player, or baseball fan, and accordingly, Sarah knew quite a lot about baseball. Despite knowing somewhat less about basketball or volleyball, nothing would curb Sarah's enthusiasm for the game. Word of caution, however, do not sit too close to her at a volleyball game because you're likely at any time and without warning, receive a sharp elbow in the side along with a request to explain what just happened on the court. Sarah has a big heart and is hard-headed. That's a story best told by Sarah. According to various organizations, Sarah is one of the 100 most powerful people in Sarasota. A distinguished citizen, an Olympic torchbearer, 
and a community hero. But tonight, Sarah has come home, she's one of ours, to be inducted as a member of the SCF Hall of Fame. Dr. Sarah Pappas. Good evening, everyone. It is truly an honor to be here tonight. They've already stolen many parts of my speech, but the official things that I'm supposed to remember are our baseball team getting to the World Series twice when I was president. As Carol said, the, the, base, the softball girls qualifying for the national tournament. Funding of this Athletic Hall of Fame happened during my presidency. We hired Meredith Headings, who later became a softball coach, who later became a member of this Hall of Fame. Basketball qualified for the state tournament in 2007 and 8, and numerous volleyball appearances at the state tournament. But it's the unofficial memories that will last me a lifetime. The pleasure of working with Dr. Don Bowman, George Sanders, uh, Matt Ennis was there, and Brian Newberry. I will never forget Brian Newberry, partly because all the good things he did, but he also served me those hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember the dynamic basketball player called James Life. He was a troubled young man from Fort Myers, as I remember, and our basketball coaches came and worked with him, and he matured into a fine young man at MCC then, and went on to play at UMass and at the European Basketball Leagues, and I kept in touch with him by email all those years, and I just will never forget James' life, so wherever he is, I think he lives in Lakeland now, so maybe the Hill family that lives out there can look him up. I remember all the baseball and softball games on wonderful spring nights with my husband there, and again, I wrote down the hot dogs, that's what's here, <laughs> and the popcorn. I remember doing a Zumba routine with the softball and volleyball women players at halftime on the basketball court, and it was my birthday that night, so that was very special. And then getting to know the entire Hill family, seeing the family there for every home game, witnessing the famous kiss through the fence, the respect we all had for number seven his legacy will just live forever at this college and in my heart. I remember going to Grand Junction the year we came in uh, second in the World Series, and what an experience Grand Junction is. What a fabulous town. And I remember we had to eat, the, the, the team, the baseball team, and I, we had to eat in a parking lot because the Pizza Hut's close at 10 a.m. at Grand Junction, Colorado. The whole town closes down, so 10 o'clock is considered midnight, I guess, to them. And Carol stole my thunder on this, but I have to give Jenny Hill the credit at Grand Junction. She's the one that taught me how to make the, rose, the noise maker with an empty plastic bottle uh, with you put pennies or uh, nickels in it. And we had a cheering section at Grand Junction. I mean, there were about 30 of us with these shakers. I mean, it was like thunder across the valley. It was fantastic. Well, I took that habit with me to a volleyball game, and a referee went over to George Sanders and says, go tell that woman across the gym there to stop that noisemaker, I'm gonna eject her from the game. <laughs> and George said, that's no woman, that's my boss, she's the president of the college. <laughs> you go tell her. So, oh, so Jenny, you taught me a bad habit there, but it was fabulous. <laughs> And finally, people sometimes tell me, Sarah, you need to get some Botox right here on your forehead. You have some kind of a scar there, a frown line. And I tell them, that's no frown line. It's my badge of honor when the dynamic softball player called Chelsea Edwards hit a line drive to third base, hit me in the head, knocked me off my chair, and off I went to the ER saying, 
win the game for me, girls, win the game for me. And they did, so that was fabulous. So let me steal a line from my graduation speech that I gave a few years ago when Carol was nice enough to invite me back. MJC, MCC, SCF. The name will change, but this excellent institution will live forever, and the athletic program is a huge part of that excellence. So thank you very much for this honor. Let's give one more round of applause for all of our inductees. Each year I'm reminded of a few things that, that uh, are, are hallmarks of our uh, athletic program and college here. Uh, family always comes to mind and tradition. And I, th I think one of the um, items that started here nine years ago was our Hall of Fame, where we take time to pause and remember the tradition and honor those that have brought us to where we are. So I, I congratulate all of the inductees tonight. A tradition that started recently in our Hall of Fame is that we have asked a Hall of Fame member to come up and say our final uh, words. And so I would like to invite Mr. Ryan Moore to say a few words. Hey, big round of applause for Matt for putting this on tonight. He does a great job. Bear with me for one second, please. I would like Mrs. Jenny Hill to come here, please. And Mr. Harry Kanan to come here, please. You know, my father, who was a pretty wise man, he told me one day, he said, you know, when you leave this place, and we're all gonna leave this place sometime, you can't take anything with you. But what you have left is your legacy. And from the looks of tonight, and these are the individuals right here, this college owes them everything. Because this is the legacy that they started. These three individuals started this legacy at this institution. So we, I'd like to just to give them a standing ovation for everything that they have done. <laughs> they left us in pretty good hands, don't you think? It's hard to top anything that uh, any of these individuals have done or can say. And, and congratulations to Al and the Cash family and to uh, um, Dr. Pappas. Um, you know, all well deserved and 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 then some. And um, I'd like to thank um, another person who doesn't probably get a lot of thanks, and, and that is Dr. Postfeld. Dr. Postfeld is a is a huge uh, athletic uh, supporter and fan of our college. I'd also like to thank Cassandra Holmes from the State College of Foundation. She will tell you as long as, and Dr. Pappas will tell you, and Dr. Popes will tell you, we have come light years, light years ahead of our time since we have begun this venture of recognizing athletics in the Hall of Fame. And, and um, so tonight is a, is, is a night that we, we forget that we're teachers, presidents, ex-presidents. We forget that we're coaches. We forget that we're family members, baseball players, basketball players, friends have you. Tonight we unite. Tonight we are SCF. Tonight we are Manatee Community College. We are Manatee Junior College. The one beautiful thing about this night that always reminds me, and you know, everybody has said it from up here, we are a family. And I was blessed enough, like Tim was blessed enough, and Ronnie Wynn was blessed enough. Coach Wynn brought all of us in and wrapped us in one big blanket and said, this is my world. It's a pretty good world. Let's have a good time. And that's what it's been since I was just a little guy watching him coach third base when I was a bat boy and Timmy and I grew up together and were roommates in college and now watching him be the, the head baseball coach of his dad's organization and Coach Wynn's organization and, and it's, an, it's an honor to watch. I mean, you're talking about, you know, from one icon to another icon and here's another icon in the making. I mean, this college is so blessed to have not just baseball but Elliot with, Washington, or Elliot with basketball and Matt as an AD and George Guys, we are an awesome family. So tonight I'd just like to encourage you to reach out to each other, thank each other. Um, it does, we, we, we have to do a lot to, to make this stuff happen, to support our athletic programs. I encourage you to get involved. I encourage you to call Cassandra at the State College of Foundation. Get involved. She has a hundred million things 
that she can help you with. We have come light years. We have got a true partner in, in, in Dr. Uh, Probstfeld and, and Mrs. Holmes. I'm telling you, we are in great hands moving forward, and we have big plans and big opportunities. So I encourage you to get involved. And um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce uh, Chelsea from the foundation. And um, a lot of you guys don't know, last year at this time, we didn't have, am I right? We didn't have um, the state, the, the foundation. Um, and I also want to mention Peg Lowry, by the way, Dr. Pappas. Peg Lowry was another genuine supporter of athletics. I mean, if she were here tonight, she'd be so proud. She was a, a champion of our athletics, as you, you guys know, of working with her. Uh, Chelsea Lucas is, I want to introduce her. She's with the State College of Foundation. A year ago today, we did not have a champion within the foundation, other than Peg, to really go after the alumni. We have worked really hard through the foundation, through Dr. Pappas and Dr. Prosfeld, to really build our alumni. And for the first time in a long time, we have um, really starting to work with the college and bring in to light our alumni. And, 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 and Nick Affair will tell you that he has, he has spent all kinds of time uh, trying to find names and numbers to call people. If he, any of you know anybody that was a former <laughs> member of athletics, please let Nick know. He will be on him like the FBI. <laughs> um, but uh, Chelsea, I'm going to introduce Chelsea, and Chelsea's going to say a couple words about the foundation and what her role is. And this is something different than we had last year, so take it away. Thank you so much. Um, this is my first time at the Hall of Fame dinner, and I am just thrilled to be here with all of you, with all of the alumni. Um, thank you, Ryan, and thank you, Matt, for, for the introduction and just this wonderful evening. And um, congratulations to the inductees. You, based on what I've heard tonight, are well-deserving. Um, and I'm just very excited to be back. I, I graduated from the school in 2011 from the Venice campus, and I'm just ecstatic that uh, Dr. P created this this position for her plan to to boldly engage with the alumni and with the community and with the current students uh, and that's what we are working towards with the Alumni Association. We want to bring you back to the school. We want to make sure that you and all of your alumni friends that you know um, come back and, and continue to support us and, and be involved with us. Um, and it has been a pleasure meeting some of you tonight. Some of you I've met previously. Nick, thank you so much for all of your help. And uh, I look forward to meeting more of you. So um, yeah, I look forward to meeting more of you. If there's anything that I or the foundation can ever do, I'm here for you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you, Chelsea. I really appreciate that. Before we part ways and conclude for the evening. I need to recognize a few folks that uh, make this make this evening uh, possible, and that's the tremendous athletic staff. Uh, so if I could, please, again, wave or stand up, whatever makes you comfortable. Uh, our athletic trainer, Laura Stelzer. <laughs> Laura. Thank you, Laura. New to our, new to our team, Loretta DeMonte, our staff assistant. <clears throat> Our softball coach, Mandy Sherman. Already mentioned, the infamous Elliot Washington, our basketball coach. And the man behind the radar gun, Tim Hill, our baseball coach. And then finally, our tennis coach, Clayton Taylor. All the way in the back. And I would again like to thank our sponsors and especially thank all of you all for attending. Again, congratulate our inductees. Uh, we are so fortunate uh, for the accomplishments that you have all bestowed upon our institution and brought our institution into such a positive light. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the evening. And please drive safely. Enjoy.